Hey everyone, today we're going to go over a useful component called the Asset Multiplexer. The Asset Multiplexer allows you to switch what assets are being used on an object um, simply using a numeric value. So we have a cube here with three buttons on it. There's a red button, a green button, and a gray button, and it swaps the materials. Well, let's get started building this. There's going to be no logics involved, but you could use logics to drive this. A new uh, component has just been added as well called a material set. I couldn't figure that one out today, so I'm showing you how I would have done it before the material set component was added, just in case this is helpful. Once I figure out the material set, I'll do another video on that one. But for now, this is the asset multiplexer. So I'm going to put this to one side. You can find it in my public folder under the tutorials folder if you want to refer to a completed version. And we're going to make a few shapes. So I'm going to spawn out the shape tip. First of all, we'll have a box, and then I'm going to make a cylinder. By pushing secondary select, the shape tool goes through the shapes it can do, by the way. So here we want a cylinder that looks like a button. That'll do. A bit bigger than the, the example object, but that's fine. We're also going to need a developer tooltip, and then that's all we need. I have the three materials we're going to use to the left here. These are all found in Neos Essentials ground and then the Dylan scissors, uh, scissors pack. Dylan scissors materials um, are super low res and so I use them for debug materials because I just need something that looks like rough. In this case it's like uh, red sand, green grass and regular sand as far as I'm aware. So now we've got all the shapes we need. I'm going to inspect the cube and on the cube here we're going to scroll to the bottom and we're going to add a component. So we do uh, attach component. And then we go to uh, utility. No, it's not new. Yes, there is utility right there. Asset multiplexer A. So click this one. And then you'll see here there's a lot of options here. You can do this with any type of um, basically like texture or asset as they're called. Uh, so it's going to work with um, textures and, and meshes and materials, etc. We're going to do a material today. If you'd like a tutorial on any of the texture formats, let me know. Um, the video texture is also super useful. Um, animation might be useful. We'll try those out when we cover the animations tutorials. For now, just the materials. Asset multiplexer material. The asset multiplexer material here has got a target field, and we're going to set that target field to be the zeroth element of the mesh renderer. So that's the first element here, zero. So grab the word zero, and then put it in the target box. We're going to clear that. I accidentally added it. Now, in the assets list, we're going to add three elements. So one, two, three. But the red one is first, the green one is second, and the yellow one as the last one. We're going to bring these to the side so we can refer back to them. They were in... which order were they in? Red first. Okay, cool. So now, when I set the index here, this index property, when I set this index property to 1, material 1 will appear, 2, material 2 will appear. Now we're going to grab this cylinder, and we're going to parent it to the cube. And then we're going to reset its position and its rotation. Actually, let's undo the rotation. And we'll uh, grab it and we'll bring it out. Let's do that again because that wasn't fun. There we go. This is just going to be rough as it's a tutorial, but you could make this more precise if you would like. Now we're going to set up some components on the cylinder. I'm going to get rid of this inspector because we've got two. On the cylinder, we're going to go down to the bottom. We're going to do attach component, transform, interaction, touch value option. I'm not sure if I've done a tutorial on this one. I'll do one separately, but this is touch value option. Touch value option selects a data type. And in this case, we're going to select an int. Now touch value option will set the target here to the value indicated here when it is touched. And so for the target, we're going to want to select the, oh, we can get rid of this. We're going to want to select the um, index property of the uh, asset multiplexer. So here the target goes on there. And so now if I set the um, asset multiplexer to material ID one, and we click the button, it will go back to the material index zero. 
And now we're going to duplicate the cylinder. Select the duplicate, move it to the left, and let's go up. And then we're going to duplicate it one more time. And we're going to move it down. Now on this bottom cylinder, we're going to select uh, the touch value option and do two here. And then one here. Now we're going to deselect everything because we're now done. So we push this button, we get material ID one, push this one, sorry, material ID zero, material ID one, and material ID two. Due to the way that UVs work on these cylinders, I'm going to use the color tip to indicate which one is which rather than the ma a material. So here we're going to equip the color tip. We're going to go to color picker. The first material is kind of red. The second material is green. And then the third material is basically yellow. So now we have a red button, a green button, and a yellow button. Last thing to do is make those buttons non-grabbable. I'm just going to do that real quick with the grabbable set tip. There we go. And now we have our cube. So uh, red, green, yellow, red, green, yellow. This can expand to a number of materials. You can just keep adding them to the list. You could also logics between um, the index here. Uh, an example being like, I don't know, the example that came to mind is a Dragon Ball Z character, right? So they might have a different material when they're in the powered up state. I forget what it's called. Uh, you can shame me in the comments if you like. But uh, when they're in their powered up state, they go blonde. They usually have black hair. I need to watch Dragon Ball Z. I have never watched it. Um, you might want to set the uh, index here to index two or one, and then that would mean their hair is blonde. And then back down to zero would be their hair would be black. I hope that's helpful. Um, this um, both components showed here, asset multiplexer and touch value option are super useful. I was concentrating on asset multiplexer. Um, I will do a separate one on touch value option later because there's a lot of uh, other properties we didn't cover here. We just set the target to be the index on the asset multiplexer and the value to be the value we wanted to specify. You'll find this version of the cube, which is a little bit more tidy in um, the tutorial folder in my public folder. Play around with it, use it in your worlds, use it in your um, setups. It's uh, super useful. It's actually already in use in the Spider-Man warehouse map. It's used to swap the material that the Spider-Mans that you can equip are using. It's exact same uh, setup. Um, at the time, I didn't know about touch value options, so instead I used the uh, I used logics and touchable components to write to the index multiplexer. That works too. Hope that helps. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. I'll see you next time.